It's time for Girls in Golf Podcast with your favorite hosts, Lex and Sarah. Ladies, when you're ready. Welcome back to Girls in Golf. It's been a couple of weeks since we've seen you all, but we're really excited about our interview and our guests today because as you can see, it's Michelle Wee West joining us live with her daughter, McKenna Kamali, you know, West. Hi, Michelle. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? I put her down at her crib, but um, she didn't want to stay there, so I'm wearing her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to hear a crying baby in the background. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just so happy to have you today because there's a very special announcement that just came out that you are going to be an assistant captain at the 2021 Solheim Cup. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, it's definitely a really big dream come true for me, especially being assistant captain under Pat, um, when she asked me, it was, I was, I was like, I muted her for a quick second. Like, so she wouldn't hear me. And I was like jumping up and down. It was like in the <laughs> movies, you know, um, where like you did like really embarrassing dance. Um, but I'm, just, I'm so honored to be assistant captain under her. So you've played in five solo line cups already, uh, one 20, 2009, 2015 and 2017. What does this mean for you? Um, just, I mean, Solheim is, you know, a big part of my life. Um, you know, it's just one of those tournaments, one of those events that I look forward to every two years. Um, it's a, such a great honor to make the team. Um, I played under some amazing, amazing captains. Um, you know, Pat was being, was my pod mom the last two times I played. Um, so that was really special. Um, but just being able to wear red, white, and blue, um, represent my country and, um, to compete in Solheim, one of the most prestigious events in women's golf it's just, it's a great honor. It's, and I have so much fun too. You mentioned um, that Pat was your pod mom. For those that maybe aren't as familiar with Solheim, can you explain like how you guys are broken into pods and what the relationships with the assistant captains are like? For sure. Um, so Solheim, we have 12 members on the team. Yeah, we have 12. <laughs> and we're broken down into three pods. So there's four players per pod. Um, and Julie implemented this. Um, and I forgot, who did he get this from again? From one of the Ryder Cup captains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're but broken into countries. Mom said Polly yeah. where she helped me out. Um, so they, we did a personality test and we got split up to pods based on our personality um, being like, okay, the thought process behind it is, okay, we would much rather, I mean, it would be much better to play with someone that our personality matched with and someone, someone that we're clashing with. And then we didn't even know we were clashing. Um, so it was really eye-opening taking the personality test. Um, it was in the pod, Pat was my pod mom and it just clicked immediately. I mean, she was just so easy to work with, so easy to be under, um, such a calming force, um, just someone that we had fun with. And, um, you know, Julie being spread out of over 12 people, you know, it's hard. You don't get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with captains. So it was nice having one designated person that was with you the entire time. Um, and I was just really lucky that was Pat for me. Was there anything that you guys did together that kind of helped you guys bond um, in terms of um, outside activities or maybe just like one-on-one -on -one check in conversations? What, what made that connection truly happen? Um, just the fact that she was like really there for us, you know, um, that we can go to her at any time during the day, during the night um, and during the rounds as well, too. She would be with us during the practice rounds. She'd be the face that we would see a lot during the rounds. You know, if we were down, um, you know, Pat was there. If we were really down, we would see Julie. You didn't want to see Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, it was just, it was really nice. And obviously, you know, in the team room, you know, having a glass of wine at night, you know, just kind of being relaxing, just being normal people. Um, you know, it's just, it was a lot of fun to connect. So being, uh, an assistant captain this year, how do you hope to help your team? Um, the same way that Pat did with ours. Um, you know, I just want to be someone that will be there for the, for my pod. Um, you know, someone that they feel comfortable talking to any, you know, problem arises. I want them to be able to speak to me freely. Um, you know, I think transparency is one of the biggest things, most important things to us. So I just want our players to be transparent with us, to be upfront with us and um, just to have fun, really. I just want to make a fun experience for everyone. But I, I believe that better golf is played when you're having fun. Um, so overall, just a relaxed, fun environment, a good culture, but also a type of culture that makes us want to win. Is there a particular format that you're like really psyched about to help these girls prepare for, or is it just the whole event in general? I think it's the whole event in general. Um, I think 
especially for the rookies, um, playing in those team matches are just so special because it's something that you haven't really done since junior golf or even ever. And alternate shot is also one of those things where, you know, a lot of players have not, don't have a lot of experience or have zero experience in. And it's a format that I really like. Um, so hopefully, you know, just using my experience, I can help them get more comfortable with that weird format. Have there um, been playing captains in Solheim Cup and do you have any ambitions of doing that? Um, I think, I think Julie was. I think Julie played. Right? Yeah, she was playing assistant captain. Um, I think there were others. I mean, Pat and I have talked to this to an extent and I told her I'm just going to completely leave it up to her. I mean, you know, if we're in that position where I am playing well, I I don't care regard. I mean, obviously I would love to play, um, but my role as assistant captain is more important right now. This is a commitment that I'm making to her. And if she wants me to play, then I'll play. But if she just wants me to be just assistant captain, then I'm totally cool with that too. And I'm more than down for that. Um, but we'll see. That's a that's a road that we'll later cross, maybe or maybe not. Um, but it's just it's completely up to her. So we've also noticed that you've started um, playing again. Are you excited to get back into the game? Um, and where do you think, where are you going to start in terms of your game? Yeah, I'm super excited. I just have been hitting a little a little bit of golf balls, not a lot, um, you know, obviously just postpartum and all. <laughs> um, I've been up to hitting like, you know, 30 minutes of golf balls now, just a couple of drivers here and there. Um, about to get on the course this weekend. Um, you know, it's been really nice to have my parents watch her and have someone, you know, babysit. So I'm taking full advantage right now. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Um, it just all depends on COVID really, um, on the state of the world and how safe it is for me and for Canada to travel. Um, because I won't ever put her in a position where, you know, I feel like it's going to be unsafe. So really it depends more on the pandemic situation than my game situation right now. Um, but I'm just really enjoying just rediscovering my body, not being pregnant is kind of <laughs> nice and swinging. It's a lot easier. Um, so I'm just having fun with it. So let's go into that a little bit more. You know, obviously, Kenna is the biggest part of your life, you know, now and probably ever. So what was your birth experience like, especially in the pandemic? And how has your first month of motherhood been? Um, it's It was crazy. Um, you know, I never expected to be pregnant during the pandemic. It was a slightly nerve wracking situation because... In the beginning, it was like my doctor was like, oh, you know, there's no research. Um, there's nothing being shown where it affects pregnant mothers and um, and babies. It's only old people. So you're fine. And then like a week later, new, um, you know, research came out that mother pregnant mothers are at high risk because we have a limited lung capacity as it is. So um, that was really scary to to realize. And then you started reading articles that babies were getting it and babies were in the NICU and babies, you know, moms were in comas and all this new information. I was just like, it went from, okay, we're not at target at all to, okay, we're really high risk. And it was just really scary. But at the same time, you know, being here in San Francisco, everyone took it very seriously. So the case is really low from the very beginning. Um, and we didn't really leave our house. Um, so, you know, it was, it was nerve wracking and all of a sudden, you know, Johnny was able to come to all the appointments and then it was like, no, no appointments whatsoever. And then, um, you know, the birthing experience is uh, pretty wild. Um, I actually had a Nike shoot, um, scheduled because we're like, okay, past 36 weeks, I don't know when the baby will come. So let's just, you know, get it done. And I texted, um, my Nike guy, I'm like, ha, ah, funny story, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it was wild, you know, she came four weeks early. Um, we had a, like a, you know, emergency induction. So that was a little bit nerve wracking and, you know, in the pandemic getting, you know, tested for coronavirus, um, in the hospital, that was a little weird. Um, and then once Johnny came, we couldn't leave the room at all. Like we could even go in the, out in the hallway. Wow. Yeah. Like in the beginning, I guess he was roaming to see if we can get like takeout or something. Delivered. Yes. Nothing. I mean, just, we couldn't leave the room. Um, so that was pretty gnarly, but otherwise, I mean, she came so early that she was so tiny that it was, um, pretty, pretty good. It went smoothly, you know, just our labor and delivery nurses are godsend. Um, you know, they are just truly so helpful. And I asked so many questions. I was so annoying. Um, but they were just so helpful And the hospital that we were at. It was a really, truly cool experience. 
I actually pulled her out myself, which was crazy. What? Yeah. That's so cool. That was a funny story. My doctor was like, here, grab her. Take her out. And I'm like, what? (laughs) I'm like, "Ah." that must have been surreal. Yeah, it was awesome. It was, it was, uh, looking back on it, it was just, it was so cool. So I was also curious about um, how you guys decided upon um, the name that you chose. It, I think it's so beautiful. Um, and I know there's a bit of, bit, uh, a little bit of backstory there. I was wondering if you could share with us. Yeah. Um, McKenna was strangely a name that Johnny and I both liked previously to like meeting each other. Um, so naming her really wasn't hard at all because we both like liked it from the very beginning. Um, you know, I just, I kind of wanted a name where, you know, it was a, it was a girl name, but also not like too girly and, you know, just really liked Kenna for short. I like having a longer name and then shortening it. Um, McKenna is actually my husband's favorite place in the world. It's a, um, it's a city, a little town in Maui. Um, that he really likes. It's spelled with one N, so he changed it and made it two Ns. Um, McKenna in Hawaiian, in Hawaiian means abundance. Um, like, and then her middle name, I told my best friend, my maid of honor, um, to to give her a middle name. And um, in Hawaiian culture, you ha- they have to have a, a dream or a vision, and then they consult with a Hawaiian elder, and then they come up with a name. And for the longest time, my best friend wasn't coming up with anything she's like I haven't had a dream yet I haven't had nothing um and then we went to Maui together and there was a lot of turbulence and I hate turbulence and she held my hand and was, I guess that name just like popped up like a vision of her face popped up and the name popped up and then she consulted you know with her elders and then came up with the name um Kamale in Hawaiian means um oh my god I'm blanking out. oh yeah <laughs> beloved one no sleep does a lot to your brain. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but Kamale means beloved one. So in addition to McKenna, it means abundantly beloved. Um, so we immediately fell in love with it. Yuna is her Korean name. And it means beautiful. Um, and what else does it mean? Something else too, isn't it? Oh, it means wise and beautiful. My mom helped me pick out the um, Chinese characters for it. Um, so yeah, that's a whole name, kind of, um, you know, both my honoring my Korean culture and then, you know, growing up in Hawaii, being raised there, um, you know, Hawaii is such a big part of me that, you know, I wanted to have both of it in her name. That's really beautiful. What's been your favorite moment with her so far? Um, I think mornings, I think just seeing her grow, um, you know, just from the very beginning, she's had so much personality. Um, and it's just been like so amazing, you know, just her recognizing us and, you know, just her being on me and, you know, she's just been so much fun. Well, lastly, you know, we'll let you go because I'm sure Kenna's ready to sleep unless she's asleep already. But I wanted to ask about <laughs> your um, TV commitments because you were just dipping your toe in the water, you know, when we saw you mm-hmm. in March and what's your future like there? Um, you know, Mark Rothley and I were actually just laughing about it because, you know, that was like the, really the first day of the pandemic that I came to America with a sporting event. And I remember, you know, waking up that morning, I had like a full on panic attack the night before because I was like, I felt I was pregnant. And that was when like the research came out that pregnant women at high risk. I was like across the country alone in a hotel room, like away from my husband and everyone. And I was like reading about all this. And like, you know, when you go down the news rabbit hole, it's just becomes like more and more. And you know, and then I went on set the next day and I'm like looking behind me and no one's social distancing, no one's wearing masks. And I just took off channel. I was like, I really don't feel comfortable. And they were like, go home, please like go home. And I remember landing and being like, okay, wow. The player championship is canceled and we don't have any more sports now. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I'm just so glad that you know, sports is slowly starting to come back. Um, and I think last week there was no positive cases on the PJ tour. So that's amazing. Um, and yeah, I, just, I definitely wanted to keep doing TV, um, hopefully a couple more this year. Um, I can't say which ones, because it hasn't been announced yet, but there are some in the works, which I'm really excited about. And, you know, next year, hopefully I'll be back to playing, um, but I still, you know, want to do some TV. I love being on TV um, and talking about the games that I love. Uh, so we'll see. I want to try to do both and be a mom. I've, I've tried to do a lot of things, but we'll see. <laughs> 
That's that's just what we do, right? We like to multitask and try to achieve exactly. all of the things. Well, yeah. thank you so much for joining us today. We were so happy that we could make this work. And congratulations once again on being assistant captain in next year's Solheim Cup. We really look forward to it. Thank you. This has been another episode of Girls in Golf. Hopefully next week we will have a new episode for you. Until then, I've been Lex and Sarah as well as Lolly. I think we have a little cat appearance over there. Um, We'll see you guys next Wednesday.